Are you making these three mistakes with the apply to each action in your Power Automate flow? Number one, looping through a single item. Number two, creating unnecessary nested loops. Number three, looping through an unfiltered array. In this video tutorial, I'll go over how to avoid these mistakes when using the apply to each action. Stick around till the end of this video where I'll share a few helpful insights when it comes to using the apply to each action in your Power Automate flow. The apply to each action in Power Automate is a control action that can be used to loop through an array of items. Actions such as the get items, get emails, list rows, get files, and list files in folders will return an array of items. An array is a collection of items. The first item in an array is zero, second is one, third is two, and so on. The actions nested inside an apply to each action will be performed on each SharePoint list item, email, Excel row, and file returned. In this flow, I'm using a filter query to filter out an item based on a client ID. I've set up my SharePoint list in a way that only allows unique values for the client ID. This means that the get items action will always return a single item. However, even though the get items action returns a single item, it will still return an array. I have a few compose actions that I'm using in my post adaptive card in a chat or channel action. When I try to insert dynamic content from the get items action into a compose action, it automatically nests the compose action inside an apply to each action. If your array contains a single item, reference it directly instead. To get the dynamic content without an apply to each action, we'll need to use an expression. This compose action will return the title of the item. However, the apply to each action isn't necessary. First, click on the three dots of the compose action and select peak code. The dynamic content key can be found after the question mark. I'm going to select the content after the question mark and before the double quotes and copy it to my clipboard. Delete the dynamic content and pull the compose action outside of the apply to each action. In the compose action, insert an expression. Enter a question mark and a zero between square brackets to access the first item in the array. Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression. Paste the dynamic content key. Press the up arrow key to go to the start of the expression. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. This expression will return the client name from the first item in the array. Run a test. There's one more way you can get the dynamic content key. Add a compose action to store the value dynamic content from the get items action. Run a test. In the outputs of the compose action, the dynamic content keys are the text in red between double quotes. I'll reference this output while composing the expressions for the rest of the content in my adaptive card. I'll highlight my placeholder text and insert an expression. Enter a question mark and a zero between square brackets. Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression and enter square brackets and single quotes. The dynamic content key will go in between the single quotes. Because the status is a choice column, the dynamic content key will be status with a capital S followed by a forward slash and value with a capital V. Press the up arrow key to go to the start of the expression. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. I'll copy this entire expression to my clipboard. This expression will return the status of the client. The onboarded dynamic content is a date. I'll highlight the placeholder text and paste the expression from my clipboard into the expression field. I'll replace the dynamic content key with onboarded. To format the date, I'll wrap this entire expression in a format date time function. Press the up arrow key to go to the start of the expression. Enter format date time and an opening bracket. Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression. Add a comma and single quotes. Enter a date format between the single quotes. I'll enter this format. 
Press the down arrow key to go to the end of the expression and insert a closing bracket. I'll copy this entire expression to my clipboard. I'll repeat the previous steps for the contract renewal. Lastly, I'll adjust the button text and insert the link to the client folder. Run a test. In this flow, I'd like to send an email to the assigned staff of tasks that are due soon or overdue. The assigned to column in my SharePoint list is a multi-person column. When I add the assigned to email dynamic content to my send an email action, Power Automate automatically nests the send an email action within an apply to each action. By nesting the send an email action within an apply to each action, this flow will now send a separate email to each staff in the assigned to column. To send a single email to all staff in the assigned to column, we'll need to convert the array of names to a string. I'll delete the apply to each action and add a select action. We'll use this action to return the email addresses of all staff assigned to a task. In the From field, insert the assigned to dynamic content. Click on this icon to change the mode from key value to map. Insert the assigned to email dynamic content. Power Automate has automatically added an apply to each action, which isn't necessary. I'll drag the select action outside of this apply to each action. Now I can delete the apply to each action that was automatically added. Add a join action to convert this array of email addresses to a string of text. In the from field, insert the outputs from the select action above. In the join with field, insert a separator. Because we're using the string of text in the to field of the send an email action, the addresses will need to be separated by a semicolon. Let's run a test. The select action outputs an array of email addresses. The join action takes the array and converts it into a string of text separating each item with a semicolon. Add a send an email action and insert the outputs from the join action into the to field. I'll compose a subject line and body for the email using dynamic content. Let's run a test. It's always best practice to filter your array prior to looping through it with an apply to each action. In this flow, an apply to each and condition action is being used to loop through every item returned from the get items action. Using an apply to each action this way is inefficient and unnecessary as it has to loop through all 24 items returned to check each item's status. Instead, if we add a filter query to filter out items where the status is prospect, the apply to each action will only need to loop through two items. Since the filter query is already filtering out items that meet the condition, the condition action can be deleted. If your action doesn't include a filter query field, use a filter array action instead. If you aren't familiar with how to use a filter array action, watch this tutorial to learn more. In my flows, I always add a condition action to check if there are items in my array before running the apply to each action. For troubleshooting purposes, I prefer to store the number of items returned in a compose action. Insert an expression. Use the length function and insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. Add a condition action. 
In the first value field, insert the outputs from the compose action above. Change the operator to is not equal to. Enter a zero in the second value field. In the S branch, insert the apply to each action. Add the rest of your actions for your flow into the apply to each action. If you'd like other actions to run when the get items action returns zero items, insert them into the no branch. By default, the concurrency control is turned off, which means that the apply to each action loops through each item one after the other. With the concurrency control turned off, this flow took just a little over two minutes to run. When the concurrency control is turned on, the apply to each action loops through a number of items at the same time. In this case, 50. This run only took 14 seconds to run. It's important to note that if you are using a set variable action, you should leave the concurrency control off. When building flows that require an apply to each action, it's always a good idea to limit the number of items you are looping through. Reduce the number of items by using the top count field if it's built into your action. If a top count field isn't built into your action, you can use an expression to limit the number of items in your array. Use the take function and insert the array. Add a comma and insert the number of items you'd like to take from the beginning of the array. Add and apply to each action and insert the outputs from the compose action above. Run a test. Confirm that the apply to each action is looping through the number of items you've specified in your expression. If you are using a take expression in your flow, you won't be able to access the dynamic content from the dynamic content list. You will need to use an expression. Insert the item function, add a question mark, square brackets and single quotes. Enter the dynamic content key in between the single quotes. Use compose actions to help you while building your flow. I like to use compose actions to store dynamic content while building my flow so that I can clearly see which item is being looped through. You can use the compose action to store the current item or specific dynamic content that is helpful while building your flow. Run tests at each stage of your flow before moving on to the next. It's a lot easier to pinpoint and fix issues as they arise. This approach helps to avoid the frustration of dealing with multiple problems after building your entire flow in one go. What other actions do you have trouble with in Power Automate? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Power Automate tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.